the class. Jen, are you in class? You make a prayer. That's still okay. And uh, Ben, could you make a prayer, please? Okay, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we worship your name. Thank you, Father, for being so nice unto our lives, Lord. Thank you, King of all the glory, for your grace during the day. Thank you, Father, for the direction, God, you are taking our lives, Lord. We welcome you as we start our class, Lord. We pray that you may be with us. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher and give us the spirit of obedience to your word and to your will, O oh Lord. Bless our facilitators, Lord, and be with them. May they speak what is coming from you, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, Dr. Uh, um, uh, Reverend, uh, I invite you to start off the class. I won't like to take much of your time. I see it is already 9-11, and I think it is uh, wise that uh, I, gra I grant you all the time that is remaining. So please, uh, Reverend Titus, uh, start the class. Okay, thank you so much. Uh... Uh, Reverend Clinton, and uh, we welcome you to our class. Uh, I know we've, you've been away, but today you've got an opportunity to be in class and uh, we want to say Karibu so much. I want also to extend the invitation to the rest of the students. I've seen uh, Benson, Peter, Jane, and Violet. Violet, how are you? Very well, thank you, teacher. Karibu sana. Thank you. Yes, it's an honor to have, to have all of you in class. And Jane, Nabaria Jane. Okay. So uh, we shall uh, continue with our class. And uh, I appreciate all of us that we are here. Now, there was, uh, there was that question. We can do a recap, I see. The responses, I believe you're going to get responses from uh, three of those who are in class. It seems Jane is not, uh, maybe she has a problem with the gadget or what, but um, we are seeing her, but we cannot, we are not getting any response from her. So um, I will give us, the three of us, to do a recap of um, what we learned last week. Although I know uh, Peter, uh, joined in late last week because of traveling, of taking a, a student to school to join Form 1. So that's a great progress. And thank you so much, Peter, for, for that. Uh, so, so as you do a recap, Benson and uh, Violet, who happens to be the president and the deputy, uh, you, you also include there was this question of uh, of Luke. Luke was Luke a, a Gentile or Hebrew? So you can also include in your response. So Karibu, who is going to start? Benson, Karibu. Okay. I think Peter Kasui gave a very elaborated answer in the WhatsApp group. Oh. He talked about, he explained with, with, with evidence from the Bible. Oh. If, I, if I allowed, I can go through it because I read yeah. it and I read the quotations. Okay, so you, you go ahead and it seems myself I didn't see. So it says, as I look in the gospel according to Luke, the other who is believed to be Luke does not identify himself, but was believed to be part of we section in his second volume. The part, the Acts of Apostle and the Companion of Paul, part of Mission of My Journey in the same book. Paul's letter identifies Luke 
in other three epistles, Colossians 4.14, 2 Timothy 4.11, Philemon 1.24. In Colossians 4.11, Paul gives a distinction between Luke, the Gentile, and other colleagues of circumcision group, the Jews. And later, he identifies Luke in verse 14 as a doctor. And he said that is his thinking from the Bible. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> he also answered about the, the opilas. Mm -hmm. He said the opilas is a Greek word that means loving God or a friend of God. Sure. It may have been an honorable person or title in Romans, leadership, or I rank that Luke was likely addressing according to the opening remarks in both the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts of Apostle. Mm -hmm. I think after going through that, uh, I remembered what was discussed during the class, and it, is the, it was the same thing. <laughs> and it, it, and Peter, Peter, Peter came late. <laughs> Came late, we, he, I think he did not hear what he was spoken about the Theophilus, the meaning, but he came yeah. up with a, an elaborative answer. That's that's good. Thank you so much. Uh, Violet, could yeah. you give us a, a short recap of what we learned last week? It's like, to, to remind ourselves. Okay. We were learning, we were learning the book of Luke. We saw that Luke had 24 chapters in total. It was yes. the longest amongst the uh, synoptics. It portrayed Jesus as the son of man. It was written by himself. He was a traveling companion of Apostle Paul. He was a physician, according to Colossians 4.14. Luke was very loyal to Paul, according to 1 Timothy uh, 1.15 and 2 Timothy 4.11. He liked, he liked research, a lot of research, and he was very accurate, a very accurate historian. No one could supersede him in writing in the New Testament. He was the best, maybe compared to Paul. He was an experienced a ship person. He, he loved the sea. He, he was a traveler, so he would go around um, seeing, like in, in the in ships, ships for for the C, the S-H-I-P-S. He, he, we also saw that he was the author of Acts and uh, he was a very humble person. Niongeze, ama ni wachia. Unaweza kuachia. Maybe uh, uh, Christine can add whatever she, maybe you've not uh, said. We are doing a recap, Christine. So, of our last uh, lesson, so could you shortly tell us? I, I, I want to believe that you had uh, what Violet was saying, so you don't have to repeat what, what she has already said, but you had what you you can. Mm, well, I can't. I think I've said most of the things. There's something that uh, maybe you said about Luke. He had a close relationship with a uh, Timothy and Silas, I think. Yes. James, Mark, and Barnabas, something of this up here. Not Barnabas, he was also a scholar, but when they see. Um, he, when he was doing his research, he contacted the people who had seen Jesus. Yes. He got information from Mary, mm -hmm. the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He took notice of how Jesus Christ prayed. So he's mm -hmm. one of the this gospel, I think, was one that really spoke about prayer. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, he's the one who gave a lot of uh, information of where Jesus had, of Jesus' devotional life, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Um, uh, he also talked about many of the parables. And uh, I think let me reach there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have, we have a very wonderful class. This is, I'm so happy and so grateful for all of you for that uh, teachable spirit and uh, 
the desire to, to learn. That's that's great. That's wonderful. May God bless you. Uh, anything, uh, Peter? Anything else, Peter? Shortly. Peter, are you there? Okay. Our sister Jane, are you getting us now? Jane, it seems, uh, I don't know if Jane is getting us and that we are not able to get her. If if she's getting it, Jane, if you're if you're getting us, you're hearing us, could you please uh, write on the chat on the chat box so that we can know that you you are in class and that you're getting the the lesson today. Uh, Peter, Peter, a short while ago you were active. Oh yeah, that's wonderful. Oh Jane said yes, that's great. <laughs> yeah. What about Peter Kaswi? Yeah, I am in Malim. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I thank God because Benson has ex explained much about what I wrote. I was not in the class, but I took my own time to restore, do some research on that look, and that was what I, I did. I can add on that book of Luke. Luke was among the people who, as we look on the, the gospel, we know that Luke was more educated and had a better, a more research on the on what he was writing. Okay. Maybe if I add Christina, uh, um, Luke is the one who talked about many stories that other people had not written. For example, he talked more about uh, the announcement of John the Baptist yes. and uh, about Zachariah and Gabriel meeting and uh, about Mary and Elizabeth. I mean, yeah, visiting each other. That is Mary visiting Elizabeth. And then we see Simon and Anna, the story of Simon and Anna. He wrote those nice, beautiful stories about those people. Okay, thank you, class. And um, yeah, we are doing the Bible New Testament uh, survey. Karibu sana, Friska. If you are getting us, you say yes on the chat box. Yeah, so we've been doing, or we are doing a New Testament survey. That's an overview of the books of the New Testament. And so far we have done uh, the first three books. That is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And the, those three are called um, the synoptics. I think uh, seeing together, uh, there are some similarities and uh, also some other different uh, things. So they, they are called uh, synoptics. And now there's the third, the fourth the gospel is um, the gospel of John, the gospel of John, which is called also the fourth gospel the fourth gospel. Mm, Friska, how many chapters does uh, John have? Friska Mboya, how many chapters do we have in the book of John? Yeah, use the chat box if you are not able to talk or if you are not audible. Okay, we can continue with our lesson today and I want to believe that
we are going to finish today so that uh, if possible uh, we start uh, the overview of the book of acts next week and if not possible then yeah we can do it uh, the following week the following week, weeks or the days uh, thursday probably <coughs> sorry yeah we have a lot in the book of john but since you're doing an overview we are not going to enter so much into details because uh, the books of the new testament are, are many now um, the book of john or the gospel of john is known as uh, is known as the fourth gospel the fourth gospel and it's not included uh, in the synoptics now the gospel of john uh, never provides the name of its author yeah such identification are not also made in any other of the gospel or three uh, biblical gospels uh, but two factors are uh, not uh, are what to note, uh, or two factors uh, point to the identification of John as the author. First, the book itself identifies the author as the disciple whom Jesus loved. This description likely uh, pointed to John for three reasons. The author had to be one of the 12 disciples because he was an eyewitness to the events in the gospel that is uh, you can see that one in yeah thank you friska we have seen thank you we appreciate yeah that is seen in in john 21 24 and uh, i will ask benson to read John 24, sorry, John 21, 24. John 21, 24. This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we know the author had to be one of the 12 disciples because he was an eyewitness to the events in the gospel. He was probably one of the inner circle of the three disciples. And uh, who were the three inner circle? Uh, I mean, the disciples, inner circle of Jesus, the three inner circle of Jesus. Who are these uh, disciples? Uh, Violet. I think John, there was yes. Peter, mm -hmm. and uh, Mark. Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've tried, but um, Christine, is she right? Is that right? Well, I think James, James. Uh, John, Peter, sorry? and James. John, yes, Peter, thanks. and James. Yeah, she was close. Well, it was close. And I see also uh, Jane has answered and said Peter, John, and James. Thank you. You're all right. Mm. So, uh, so it was probably one of the inner sack of the three disciples because it says the, uh, the disciples that Jesus loved. Uh, that is uh, James, John, and Peter were the inner a circle of, of of Jesus, the three in a circle of Jesus from of disciples, uh, because he was among the first Mary told of the resurrection. If you read uh, chapter twenty, verse one to ten, uh, 
those are the disciples, the first disciples that uh, Mary informed of the resurrection. The disciples also is, 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 is different from Peter in the book. It's distinguished. Peter is mentioned, but him has not been mentioned. So it is unlikely to be James of the three. It is unlikely to be James because why could uh, why, why why is it that uh, James is unlikely to be the writer of John? I, that's a question. I'm I'm bringing that question to the class. Who is going to try that question? So we are saying we are saying uh, it is not Peter because Peter has been mentioned in the book, and uh, and so we are saying it is likely to be John but unlikely to be James. Why is it that the writer of John is unlikely to be James? Who's going to try? We have, uh, we have uh, and just a person who just came in. Who is this? Let me see. Lata. Consolata. Yes, Lata. good, good, good. Yeah, Consolata. Yeah, try, try that that question, Consolata. If you heard us, kama umesikia swali unaweza jaribu Consolata. Na kama you are not sure, you try. But if you are not able to try, useme pass to pay mtu mwingine. Consolata. Okay. Mm, the deputy class president. Deputy president of the class. Try. Benson, Jaribu. Why is it unlikely for James to be the author of the book of John? Christy, Jaribu. You, Nico Blanc, <laughs> pass. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh. Violet? Oh, no idea. Uh, a minute, I'm going to purely guess this one. Now, yes. remember, he passed on before the book was written. So it's not a guess. That's actually the answer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to pinch <be> my coffee. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually the answer. Yeah, I think you remember or you know, and um, to Taweza Kulan that in the book of Acts, James was the first. James, the, the disciple of Jesus, was the first martyr. He was killed. He was the first to be killed. So, and uh, so the James that you're hearing in the book of Acts most of the time is the brother of Jesus who was not a disciple of Jesus. He later got saved and became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. So it's likely, unlikely to be uh, James because he, tie, he died soon after the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, the other evidence of John's authorship is the unanimous testimony of early Christians. Unanimous testimony testimony of so many early Christians. And among them is the second century Christian called Irenaeus. Irenaeus, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I-R-E-N-A-E-U-S. And he declared that Jesus was the disciple who laid his head on Jesus. And so he says that is the, the person who wrote 
um, the book of John. Yeah, the Gospel of John. Mm. John, no, John is is the son of Zebedee. He's one, he's one of the disciples of Jesus, the son of Zebedee, brother to, to James. And they were fishermen. Their father was Zebedee, and their mother, they say, was Salome. And Salome is uh, the sister of, of Mary, the mother of Jesus. You can, you can, you can compare so that you can know that it is Salome and the sister of, of Mary. You can compare, if you, if you can note down, you compare Matthew 27, 56. Matthew 27, 56. Note it, note it down so that you can read maybe later. Mark 15, 40. Mark 15, 40. And John... 1925. John 1925. And as you note down, I would like to call upon uh, Consolata. If if you are getting us, you you say yes in the chat box. Yeah. Consolata. Consolata Bibo. If you if you are getting us. Yeah, you say yes in the chat box so that we can know that you are in. Yeah, sometimes we are in noisy places where we are not able to to talk. Oh, thank you, thank you. So, um, John uh, really lived for a, a long time. He's considered one of the last survivors of the twelve. Yeah, that one can be seen even with, in writing of the book of, of Revelation. John died at the end of first century. He was a Jew. He wrote in Greek. But uh, the language of that time, the speaking language, the market language of that time is called Aramaic, which was spoken in Palestine at the moment of that, or at the time of Jesus Christ. So they could speak Aramaic. But his writing was right, written uh, in Greek. Um, he knew the land. He knew the land well. Uh, when you see, so he knew Jerusalem. He knew the areas of Galilee. He knew Samaria. That one can be seen by, 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 by the sightings that is is is, is cited in in the in the gospel. Uh, like John 9, 7. So he, he has, he knows the place. And he was an eyewitness to the deeds and teachings of Jesus from the beginning of his career and was very near to Jesus even during uh, the trial. During the trial. Uh, in fact, there was a time that he is the one that uh, opened the gate for Peter to enter into the high priest because I th in the, the high priest that is Annas uh, and uh, yeah into the home of the high priest because John was related to some people there. I don't know if Clinton you you know that. Uh. Uh, no, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sour, sour. <laughs> yeah, he's the disciple they described Uko sawa as. Bishop and the lawyer. Uko sawa Bishop and the <laughs> Nah, oh, asante, Doctor. Uliko unajua kwamba um, John alikuwa related na the high priest of that time. Yes, yenda alimfungulia hata alisema yenda alimuingisa Peter. It's okay, you are correct. Continue. Okay, okay sour, sour. So their occupation was uh, fishing with their father. They were helping their father, Sebedi. Uh, and they were together with his uh, brother, James. 
also with Andrew and Peter. So probably these guys had really good relationship. And uh, before they followed Jesus and even after that, and you, as you can see in the inner circle, uh, the two brothers and, uh, and Peter was, was included. Peter alijipenyeza kabisa. Yeah, baka akakuwa pale. He was also familiar with the tradition of the Jewish. Yeah, so yeah, access to the to the to the to the court of the high priest. Uh, that is uh, in John eighteen fifteen to sixteen. Who is going to read us? Ningependa to so John eighteen fifteen, chapter eighteen, verse fifteen to sixteen. Peter, if you are able, how many Peter did you last time? Oh yeah, it was it was Benson. So Peter, you can read us. John eighteen. John 18, verse 15 to 16. I can read. Mm -hmm. John 18. Metoroka mm Kidogo. So somebody else to help. I can read now. <laughs> and Simon Peter followed Jesus and saw the another disciple. That disciple was known unto high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. But Peter stood at the door without. Then he went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest and spake and spoke unto her that he kept the door and brought in Peter. Uh -huh. So it is believed that the disciple is, 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 is John. Now, mm -hmm. the probable dates of uh, writing of uh, this book, it's a wonderful book. Uh, it's a uh, between AD 40 and 140, and the likely date, the possible one is, is AD 90, AD 90, and um, where it was written probably in the surrounding of a Gentile, written in Asia Minor, most likely written in Ephesus. Yeah. And it was written after the church had achieved a measure of maturity. So uh, ninety percent, over ninety percent of the content of John does not appear in the other gospel accounts. Over ninety percent. So you can see the uniqueness of this book. Uh, the theme of Matthew stresses messiahship, or uh, or uh, king. Uh, Mark stresses servanthood, Luke stresses manhood, and this book of John uh, stresses divinity, the Son of God. So, what is the purpose of John's uh, John's uh, writing? His purpose in writing the gospel is so clear. It's so clear. And uh, Friska, if you are able to read, you can read us uh, John 20, John 20, verse 30 and 31. And if you are not able, I will request the violet to do so. 
John 20, verse 30 to 31. That I'm sorry, my neighbor, my name is Tatu. It's our time. John 20, uh, 30 and 31. Yes, that one. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is Christ, is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, believing you may have, uh, and that believing you may have life in his name. Or maybe I'll so, read that part. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Violet. And thank you also, Friska. And uh, we wish you well as you travel. It's that you may reach your destination safely. Uh, so, we see that uh, from those uh, verses, the two verses in chapter 20, the purpose of John has two things. Firstly, it was written that we could believe. It was written that we could believe. And it was written that our life could be changed through Christ. So these are the most central themes of the book of John. That we may believe. And second, that we may be changed through Christ. And uh, he has proved that because he's presenting Jesus as divine. So those signs that are written in this book, the miracles, it shows divine power. And the belief is a total commitment to Christ. And life speaks of the new nature of the believer and, it what, it, it what, and what it provides for him in Christ. So, uh, John has selected, he has selected the events to show the power and the divinity of Christ. Yeah. John uh, doesn't have a specific audience like the, the synoptics. The synoptics have got uh, a specific audience, the target audience. And um, if I may ask, uh, could you give us the target of the audience of Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, who has not spoken in class. Yeah, if you are not spoken and, oh, Victor, Victor Karibu, who are the audience of, uh, of Mark, of Matthew, and Luke? I'm sorry, I have joined you late, and uh, maybe I'll follow it uh, after the, the session. But I think you know. The audience of Matthew, the audience of Mark. Who, who was <laughs> Mark? Come on. Yeah, who are the audience or uh, the target audience that Mark and Matthew and Luke were like? Okay, mostly people who are born again. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Are you getting me? But it's breaking. I who can... 
Yeah, who can do on behalf of Victor? Who can help Victor? I can help Malim. Yes. The audience of Matthew mm. were the Jews. Yes. And then the audience of the Mark mm -hmm. were Gentiles yes. and most uh, the the Greek. Yes. It was Matthew and Mark. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And also, the audience of Luke were the Gentiles, the Romans. Mm, I think you, you are interchanging. Luke <laughs> and Mark. <laughs> but thank you anyway, you, are, you have tried. Mm -hmm. Luke was Greek, mm -hmm. and then Mark yeah. was the Romans. Okay. And you're also breaking, thank you, you've answered well. Uh, so Matthew was writing to the Jewish world. He was very Jewish in his presentation. Uh, Mark is chronological but he's very brief and to the point because he was writing to the Romans. Romans were not a people of words, but people of actions. Luke is more detailed. I think reason is because he's highly educated and he was writing to the Greek society. And so John, unlike the, the three gospel writers, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John concentrates more on the words of Jesus than his actions. He concentrates more on the words of Jesus than his actions. And so he does not record many of the uh, Lord's miracles. He has just selected a few. Those miracles which he, he does, he has recorded all the signs, bear the message that he, he wanted. And so John is, is more focused on the discourse of Jesus. And even through that and uh, the signs, he emphasizes the deity more than any other of the, of the gospel writers. Now, um, uh, John has, 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 has designed his gospel and writing in a very systematic way. And uh, he, has, he has what he call three sets of sevens. We have three sets of sevens in John's gospel. The seven, I am of Christ. The seven signs of Christ. And then there are also the seven major discourses of, of, of Christ. Uh, discourse is a uh, discourse is D I S C O. U R S E S D I S C O U R S E S discourse. So he has arranged his book into those uh, the three sets of of sevens. Seven I am's Christ seven signs of Christ, and then the seven major uh, discourses of Christ. Um, who can tell me uh, the meaning of discourse? And uh, maybe specifically to, to this context of, of the book of John, a discourse, the one that I just 
uh, spelled out. I was going to try this course. Kuna mwalimu hapa. Kama wewe ni mwalimu useme. Mwalimu <laughs> Yes Victor. Karibu. <laughs> okay, mimi si mwalimu. I'm not a teacher. Yeah, but you are a teacher of the word. Okay, 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 okay. So I think this is the um, the revelation of the 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 the, the true who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Victor amejaribu. Nani mwingine? Christine, this goes in. I don't know. I think it is speaking in a manner. <laughs> You speak in a manner that you have authority over the subject, something of the sort. Yeah, I think you are. Uh, you are right. I think you are right. Yeah. Who else is going to add to what Christina said? I can add, Malim. Yes. I think is the a kind of a connection or speech that are related. Yes. Yeah. That's one. Oh, uh -huh. Who else? Okay. Yeah, you've you've said a discourse is 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 a a, a, a speech communication uh, from a person who is who is authoritative, a person who knows the subject well. Mm. And so we have this three sets of sevens in John's gospel, seven I am's of Christ, seven signs of Christ, uh, and uh, the seven major discourses of Christ. And um, the seven I am of Christ, one, he said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life in John 6, 35. Then he said, I am the light of the world. You see, when he said even I am, when he said I am, it shows uh, that it also shows his div divinity. As you can, maybe when you go back to, to, to Genesis, when God appeared to, to Moses, he said, I am. So he said, I am. So Jesus is telling us that he is God here. So number two, I said the light of the world. He said also number three, I am the door. He said, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He said also, I am the true vibe. Uh, I can see we have uh, just two minutes. Huh? Let's 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 stop uh, there at the the seven I am's. We are going to finish next uh, week on on Tuesday. We're going to finish God willing next week on Tuesday the book of John, the overview of the book of John, and then uh, if time will allow us, we're going to start do uh, an introduction of uh, the book of Acts and uh, class. I think you're going to do more. You're going to just do more of an overview in the book of Acts. Yeah, so that's all. Thank you all mm -hmm. for being in class. Uh, That thank you for being in class. You are all welcome, and I want to wish you a, a good and wonderful night. As I welcome uh, our 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 director today, Clinton. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I take home with the seven discourse. So let us think of those discourses as we go home. Uh, the seven I am, what do they mean to you? And uh, why, 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 why did John pick interest in them? Out of the main statement that uh, that Jesus spoken, that that Jesus spoke, how come this John uh, picks this these seven arms and uh, writes them in such a, a big way? Does it mean those were the only words that Jesus spoke? And indeed, if Jesus spoke those seven arms, what do they mean to you? Do they bring a completion to your faith? Do they speak in your situation? Do they speak in your ministry? Do they remove you from a place of intimidation and fear and place you to a place of um, power, to a place of, uh, uh, of, of, of surety, of satanity? And so think of those, uh, those seven statements that uh, John picked interest in them. And then another question, how come the other, the, other, the other people didn't write about them? Does it mean they didn't hear about it? We have <laughs> got a, very, a small background of, of John. So how come Matthew didn't realize Jesus said, I'm the light? And if he did, how come he didn't put it in the same way that uh, John put it? And so to to look, yeah, look is detailed, but how come he missed on these seven arms? And if he did, how come John writes uh, elaborate, uh, in an elaborate way? So uh, does this seven arms summarize the Bible from the beginning to the end? And does these seven arms have a significant your salvation and ministry and your call in, in moments of scarcity and in moments of uh, 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 fear uh, and nominosity, what do you get out of these seven arms? So those are some of the things we need to contemplate on as we look forward for the coming class. How come John spends kind of uh, chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, just talking direct speech of Jesus Christ. He's just giving a direct speech, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17. What is of interest in John? And why do you think uh, John lays much emphasis on, on, uh, on, on what's spoken by Jesus? Uh, vis a -vis what he sees by him, so what he saw or experienced or what the Holy Spirit spoke to him as compared to Matthew who dwelt much on who dwell, uh, Luke who dwelt much on history what he had and all that stuff so uh, look at these authors and when you talk about John who was John to Jesus yes Matthew was that who, who was Matthew to Jesus who was James to Jesus and then who was joined to Jesus so that we are able to understand um, what, what, why, why, why he focused on the words of Jesus more than any other activity that happened around uh, Jesus himself. So those are some of the thoughts that we want to take home through the weekend. Uh, those who are preparing someone, I mean, I'm interested to, to get a someone of seven I arms. Yeah, if, if if you make a sermon of seven arms, please uh, share with me. I, I would like to I would like to 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 get to to get to to, to get to know uh, how the Lord um, uh, quickens your spirit on the seven arms. Yeah. So I I think today Malima has not given out an assignment, so we are free to read the book of John. In, uh, in as a whole, I will encourage you to read more on chapter 14 to chapter 17. Uh, chapter 14 to chapter 17. I like you to read more on that, and also I like you to get the figuratives. Uh, 
that uh, in that book, like, uh, for example, Jesus speaking to Nicodemus, he speaks on water. He says that uh, born of water. And then he speaks to the Samaritan woman and he says, uh, uh, unless you drink of this water. And then he speaks to, uh, you know, to, 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 his, to his audience and he says, I'm the bread. I'm the light. <laughs> so uh, at some point he says I'm the true vine. Uh, you know, he's there are a lot of vicarations that he's putting in place, or rather John is using in communication, or rather in communicating uh, what he wants his audience to get. So uh, what is he, what, what are these figuratives that are uh, scenarios that we are getting from this particular book of uh, of John and uh, how are they building up our faith in Christ how are they building our faith in Christ I, I would like to see how those vicarations they they influence your understanding of John or rather your understanding of the of, of, of the book of John and how they are also affecting your faith. So I'm interested to know much on that as a person. And uh, I want to challenge us to, to go deeper and read. So thank you very much uh, for joining the class today. I'll be there Tuesday. I just to see how God is moving us on. So thank you very much. Uh, I've just seen assignment written by uh, assignment has been given. Titus, uh, Reverend Titus has given assignment. Make a sermon on seven IAMs and uh, upload that sermon by Tuesday, so that you can see how the Lord is in ministering to you as far as this book is concerned. Yeah, let us make a prayer. Jesus, I thank you for the class, the servant uh, Titus, whom Lord you have given uh, rest, uh, Jesus to labor for this class. Father, I speak a blessing in his life, to his children, to his ministry, and all that he's doing in the land of West Pokot. He left his own land to be a blessing to uh, people of another nation. Uh, and I ask of your grace in that ministry in West Pokot. And thank you, Jesus, uh, for each and everyone in this class. As they contemplate on your word, I pray for deeper understanding and insights through uh, this session. I give you glory and honor. In your name I pray and believe. Amen. So God bless you, and I wish you a blessed evening. Amen. Amen.